G'day viewers, and welcome the hell back to Aussie Backyard Food. Well, it's a beautiful day here in the Blue Mountains. We're near in the tail end of spring, and as you might be able to see behind me, all that white flower is Aussie Manuka. The Kiwis have coined that phrase Manuka, but here in Australia we call it Leptospermum, or jelly bush. Same stuff, although slightly better. Each leptospermum and flower is like a little cup of magic. And my bees can't seem to get enough of it at the moment. So let's go and check out our newly split hives and see how these paradise honey bee boxes are faring. There's my old 10 frame Paradise Honey Bee Box. And as you can see, plenty of action in and out of that front door. But here are our subject four hives for today's episode. Okay, happy viewers. This is where we're at. Each pair has had a shuffle since the 12 days where we originally split them. So they're now back into the queened hive being on the right and the queenless hive, which are of course on the left. I'm gonna work my way down the line. So queenless, standard Langstroth, queened, standard Langstroth, queenless, paradise honey bee box to finish finally on our queened honey bee box at the end. So. Let's have a look. Our first queen cell. Okay. Interesting. I can see a queen here. A little bit unusual and she's just laid. I really hope you can see that. I don't quite know what happened there. Surely uh, they can't have made a queen in, what is it, 12 days. That's just, uh, look, as far as I know, unheard of. So unless I made a blue there, um, let's check it out. Let's go a little bit further. All right. This is what we're, we're hoping to see, expecting to see. We've got one, two, three four, five, six, soon to be capped. As you can see, open at their ends, queen cells. Here's interesting, a newly opened queen cell right there. Could that be where our just spotted queen has come from? One way or another, this colony is likely to have a properly functioning queen, which is what we want. And a bit of competition between a couple of potential candidate queens is a good thing too. A survival of the fittest situation, because as I've said in previous videos, the health of the overall colony is very much dependent on the health of our queen. We knew from the last video, and as I stated in the last video, this colony was at a, a distinct advantage. Thinking about it as I go, we did find that they were about to swarm a couple of burgeoning swarm cells. We did find, so maybe it's not that surprising that we've already got a laying queen. I think we'll close this colony back up. They're doing as well as it could have hoped. Well, better actually. As you can see, it's not just recently that I've been a fan of uh, the insulative properties of polystyrene. I've always used these old fruit and veg green grocer fruit boxes to provide some layer of protection to the lids of my hives and ultimately to the colony itself 
uh, particularly in our extreme hot summer days when that sun's building down on top of that lid. And on to our next hive we go. So what I'm hoping to find in this hive is a thriving colony that will soon need an extra box because seeing as though we put our fully mated mature queen in this box who was in full effect laying, laying her ass off basically twice her own body weight each day in eggs we expect that she would have hit the ground running and then we hope that we'll be able to add another box on top of, her, of this colony soon. A little point of interest here, just notice all that condensation on the bottom board once we've taken that end frame out, which is pretty typical for the standard Langstroths and one of their weak points, in my opinion. And the same reason that we've got to put our standard Langstroths on a slope so that condensation can drain out of the entrance. As you can see, these bees on this second from, oh, third from the edge frame are in the process of drawing this comb out. We start with a base layer of wax foundation and the bees will build on top of that. I guess the main thing to be looking for in this colony is that our queen is still pumping along and there she is. Isn't she beautiful? Still pumping along and continuing to lay as well as she was before we disrupted her 12 days ago. I can see plenty of new eggs in there. Look at her go, inspecting those cells. Looking for a nice, clean, empty one. Yeah, she's probably not gonna lay now. She's been pretty well disturbed, so we might look at getting her back in. So once again onto our Paradise Honey Bee Box Queenless Hive and hoping to see plenty of new queen cells. A bit of fresh nectar in going into that outer frame, hopefully you can see that. Good example of how the bees construct their new comb. They often hang off each other like that when they're doing so. Oh, look at that. A torn open queen cell. Could we find a young queen in this hive? You know, it's got me thinking, did I get my days wrong? Stranger things have happened. What I'd be looking for right now, what I am looking for, are freshly laid eggs, which are a dead giveaway. Here's a really good example, this frame, of the difference between worker cells and drone cells. You can see how much larger those drone cells are to accommodate for the larger size drones. No queen there anyway. And no eggs. All right, and there we have a capped queen cell, which is good to see, a bit of insurance. That's a really good root pattern there, solid. Obviously credit to our original queen. There we have it, a healthy looking capped queen cell. So onto our queen right paradise honey bee box we go. Such nice calm bees. 
pleasure to work. All wild stock. I've never bought a queen in my time beekeeping. They're all wild bred and uh, never had a problem. I do see some young wet brood in there. Like to, oh yeah, and there's some eggs. So she's obviously in here and active. You don't always have to find the queen as long as you see evidence of her recent activity in the form of eggs. Might have a look at one more frame just for interest. Oh yeah, solidly laid up with eggs. It's often a clue that that'd be a more likely place to find your queen on a freshly laid up frame. Obviously it hasn't been long since she's been here. Perfect example of our bees communicating to their mates and the direction of a recent find of either pollen or nectar. Doing the waggle dance. Some real nice bees. Well, summer is well and truly in full swing now. Getting some real hot days. The bees are doing well. In fact, I've got a number of gum species flowering in the national park behind me. So I'm expecting good things from our splits. First up, we're on to our queenless, well, should be queened by now, of course, standard Langstroth. I reviewed my footage and I was able to confirm that, yeah, last time we were into these was definitely 12 days after the split. So to have a laying queen, we must have had one or two or three at least partially developed queens when we split our hive. So once again, our first two, queenless and queened, standard Langstroths had a very distinct advantage, which is good, because I want this to be unbiased. Anyway, let's have a look and see how our new young queen is performing. Bit of weight in this one. Full of nectar and pollen. Yep, plenty of freshly laid eggs in amongst that stored pollen. And there she is. A nice young golden queen, still yet to develop a fully enlarged abdomen. Having a good look for somewhere to lay. Studiously inspecting a potential cell to lay her egg in. So we'll put her back. All right, back you go. So now we're on to the second standard Langstroth containing our original queen. Another nice, solid pattern of brood there. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see this colony doing well, particularly under the gaze of our original queen, because let's face it, she got her colony to a point where they were ready to swarm. I originally got this hive as a swarm from a, a spot just up the hill from here at Wentworth Falls. And there's some really good genetics here, so I'm happy to, oh, and there she is. A beautiful golden queen. Lovely, large, engorged, golden abdomen. You go, girl. Right, and on to the Paradise Honey Bee Boxes we go. <clears throat> First up, our originally queenless Paradise Honey Bee Box. 
of course, now we're 30 days in <coughs> from the original split. This bee's having a, having a wrestle with a small hive beetle. And what is it? 18 days since I was last in this hive. <coughs> so we should expect to see a mated up young queen. Hopefully laying a bum off. And that's the difference from last time I remember this, this frame. They were in the process of drawing that down. Now they're filling it. Once again, we haven't gone easy on these bees. They've got plenty of work to do to get this hive up and operational. Not only have they got to get their queen mated up and laying well, but they've got to start constructing wax comb and filling that comb. Should be getting into the brood now. And that we are. Heaps of white royal jelly at the bottom of those cells, indicating wet brood. A queen cell there, a super seizure style queen cell with some royal jelly at the base of it. Mm, interesting. And another one there. Another two. Could it be we have a failed queen? I hope not. I do see eggs potential here for an inadequate queen that is already being superseded I guess. Let's see if we can find her. Oh there she is. Oh good. And she looks pretty good to me. Nice big fat abdomen. Right, put them back together. And to finish, our original Queen Wright Paradise Honey Bee Box. Let's see how they're going. Plenty of bees in there. They look like they're pumping along. Which is more what we'd expect. Heaps of pollen and nectar in that frame. Trying not to sweat into the bees at the moment. Bloody hot. Plenty of fresh eggs in there. Really solid pattern. Through this section here, I just cannot see an empty cell. It's either older capped brood or younger eggs and wet brood. This queen's obviously hit the ground running. I'm gonna move this frame out towards the edge because it's it's drone comb and drones well they're a bit of a drain on a colony unlike the human species the males well they're only interested in one thing so move this to the outer edge which means it'll be more likely to be used as a food storage frame Whereas this is a smaller worker comb, which is what we want. A larger workforce. Not at all times of year would you want to split up the brood nest like I'm doing here. But the amount of flowering going on, it won't take long for our queen to have that laid up. Solidly laid up. And again, solid as. Not too worried that I haven't spotted her because the evidence of a healthy, active, strong queen is right there in front of us. And a heap of pollen. All different colours. Look at that beautiful mosaic of different colored pollen, each with its own nutritional value. The beauty of having your hives in a situation with a vast array of floral species for the bees to draw on. 
this colony is doing so well, I'm gonna have to add an extra box. So that's when we need to use our stored frames of comb. Wax Moth 3 this year. And just a little update on the ant situation with our original 10 frame Paradise Honey Bee Box. As you can see, there's still a couple of stragglers, but I seem to be having a bit of an impact. So if anyone else has got any suggestions on how to control these ants, I would appreciate your input. Leave them in the comments. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's 38 days in from our initial split. And uh, the reason I'm going in now in what you might call a little bit of an impromptu inspection is to have a look at this originally queenless paradise honey bee box as it's the only one I'm really concerned about. Uh, eight days ago we had a look at it and it looked like there was some a start of some supersedure type behavior. So there we have a healthy looking capped supersedure cell. Obviously this colony is well underway in making themselves a new queen, not being happy with the original one, which we did see last time. She looked all right to me, and look, there we go. Two further new supersedure cells. Obviously this colony has identified the fact that they are not happy with their existing queen which is going to be a bit of a setback for them. You know, it's a little bit odd to me because I can see new brood. I can see eggs. I can see cap brood. I can see a healthy looking split. Do not question the wisdom of the superorganism. That's a saying that I just come up with. Feel free to use it in your own lives. Yep. Fresh eggs, young wet brood, healthy looking colony, but yet these bees felt the need to create some new queens. Well viewers, it's now 50 days since we split up these hives and it's been a brutal start to summer, hot and humid. To tell you the truth, I've been struggling to find the right sort of conditions to get into these hives and check them out. So I'm keen, just as keen as you are, to see how they're all performing. Let's get into it. Good sign so far. Plenty of bees in our originally queenless split. Bit of nectar in that outside frame, which is different from last time. Plenty in there. Even a bit of capped. Looking good. And a nice brood pattern. I think I could just about add an extra box to this one. In fact, that's what I'll go and organise. Wait right there. Where were we? That's right. Adding an extra box. I'll tell you what, I'm doing everything I can not to sweat all over these bees. If you ever wonder what that salty tint is, to my uh, Aussie backyard food honey. Now you know, the secret's out. Onto our originally queen standard Langstroth split. And these bees are very quiet. Wake up girls. Now what I'd almost say, based on what I've seen so far, that our queenless part of this split there's our original queen. He's performing slightly better than our queen split. So this is the one I'm most keen to check out and most concerned about because as we saw previously, the colony wasn't happy. They decided their queen was a bit of a misfire. So they went about creating some supersedure queens. So I'm really keen just to see how that new supersedure queen is performing and whether or not the old queen might even still remain within the hive because that can be a feature of supersedures. 
both queens can coexist in harmony. Isn't that a nice story? Oh, that's a nice, healthy looking queen. Big, big queen. And looks like she's doing a great job. Solidly laid up section of brood in the middle of that frame. Look at it go. Tiger stripes for extra speed. I've decided I'm not gonna add an extra box to this one yet. It seems that because of their queen related setback, they're not quite ready for it. Although I have reshuffled or checkerboarded the frames just to spur them along. There's plenty of bees in there and they're not far off it. I'm happy with the way they're going. But I'll just hold off for a couple of weeks, I think, with the extra box. On to our originally queen right poly split. 19 days ago, this was an empty box. I won't be going into the bottom box. I can tell a lot about the performance of this colony just based on what's going on up here. There's times of the year where you'll do a full inspection and there's other times where you don't need to rock the boat too much. And now is one of those times. First little bits of nectar in our top box. Pretty normal for 19 days. Oh yeah, some more there. Very good. Well folks, we're 89 days into this hive off. It's 39 days since our last inspection. We're in early February here in Australia and it's been a brutally hot summer. And the records are backing me up with statistics on that. It's been a real battle for me to find the right conditions to get in and have a look at these bees. But today we're in luck. Let's rip in. But before we do, let's have a quick recap. Now, as I mentioned in a previous episode, I wanted to be as scientific about this as possible. But in the world of nature, level playing fields rarely exist. As it turned out, the mother colony that we split up to create these two separate colonies was far more advanced. In fact, they were almost ready to split themselves. They were just about to swarm. The other pair, well, that's a different story. They've had the odds stacked against them. Basically, the mother colony that was divided up into these two splits was much smaller and therefore weaker, containing fewer resources, which a colony will need to refuel and create a new queen and the building blocks for what will become a future, hopefully, strong colony. And I'm sure you'll remember our once queenless colony only had enough resources to create one single solitary queen, which we saw in the form of one single queen cell within that colony when we inspected it, which then turned out to be a failed queen, which the colony then had to find the resources to create a replacement, a supersedure. So in a way, it couldn't have worked out any better any goals that these pair of colonies happen to kick can be far more easily attributed to the quality of the Paradise Honey Bee hive system, which I've, as I've stated, already got a fair bit of faith in. So, like they say, the proof is in the pudding. Let's check it all out and just see how well these bees are performing. Gotta love a good huntsman. Right. So this top box has been in place for 39 days and the bees are already doing really well for that short time. Just considering also, we haven't had much flowering this last month. Sometimes what I like to do is spread out the resources, spur the bees on a bit. Otherwise known as checkerboarding. Originally queen right hive. Yeah, they're not really looking like they need another box anytime soon, so we'll leave them as they are. Oh yeah, plenty of action. It's 
small live beetles, little buggers. Three down. Very full of bees. Look at that. Even brood on the outside edge of the outer frame. This colony is screaming out for an extra box. Just for interest, I'm gonna have a look at this second from the end frame. Because if you remember last time, the bees were in the process of drawing it out. So it might have an interesting story to tell. Oh yeah. It looks like this colony has just kicked into full wax drawing mode. You can see the way those bees are hanging off each other there, dragging the wax out of each other basically. That's literally what they're doing. So I wouldn't mind betting that in a week's time, this frame is full. All right, I'll give you some space, girls. So now, of course, we're onto our originally queen right paradise honey bee box. Yeah, a little bit further on from where they were last time. Half a frame of nectar there. Another half frame there. I think that's all about to change and I'll show you why, what I'm talking about. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I'm talking about. See these swollen flower buds? These are the flower buds of Carimbia gummifera, or the red bloodwood. It's the most significant floral species, from a beekeeping perspective anyway, in this part of the world. So my bees, they're about to freaking explode. Strap yourselves in. The next one's gonna be interesting. But before I sign off, I thought we might just have a quick catch up with Queen Violet and her crew, just to see how well this once fragile little swarm is performing. I think we might be in for a surprise. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to bring you in for a close up here, I think. Can you see all those little pairs of eyes looking back at us? That's one full box. And desperately in need of another box. That's not bad, folks. Especially when you consider it was only eight months ago that I collected this little swarm, which was only the size of my fist. Don't take my word for it. Check out the episode. From that Fajoa tree, just there. Well, if that's not a testament to the quality of this Paradise Honey Bee Box equipment, then I don't know what is. Anyway, I'm not here to sell it to you. It's just my opinion. Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to catching up with you next time, right here in my Aussie backyard. Catch ya.